That seems to me to be well within what could develop How? a purely scientific basis. How? I'm not a scientist, but it doesn't seem like a mystery of God to, oh, sure. to me personally. Oh, sure it is. <laughs> well, no, but seriously, where, where does the element I, of free I, I choice could, come I, from? I could be purely instinctual and put my head in a, in a stream and drink and choose that, to do that. But, but, but wait, 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 when you say choose, where does the, where does the choice come from any more than, my, than the choice of this glass to fall down? Where do you get a choice as opposed to a complex interaction of DNA and environment, neither of which you chose? Again, piling on completely unnecessary assumptions. It's also inviting, right. a, que uh, inviting a question that will make you uncomfortable. Perhaps. If you say that, no, it's because God has given you free will, I have to ask you, how do you know that? Well, well are you assuming that we one, have free will? One, 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 are, you, are you assuming so that we have free will? If you answer, if you ask, if you answer, then give me another, give me another source. If you answer my question with another give question, me another I'll still source. answer it. Okay. I will still answer it, Thank even you. though your question is an answer to mine. Rather, not an answer, a response to mine. Yeah. Um, the view I take about free will is that, of course, we have free will because we have no choice but to have it. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a, yeah. I was, and so, so I was, and to some quick, extent, not an I was, and I still, to some extent, am a dialectical materialist, and I also but, think there are some, there are some ironies in the anyway, universe as well as in history. But to say, of course, we have free will. The boss says we've got it is to make a mockery of the whole concept. And it's also to invite the question, what kind, what kind of tyranny is this that you want? You want an all-supervising, all-deciding person. I ask you first, what sources of information do you have about this person's existence that I don't have, that are denied to me, I'd like to know? And second, why do you want it? Why do you want to arrive at a terminus of unfreedom where there is a celestial authority upon whom all things depend and from which all things flow? Why do you want that, and how on earth do you know that there's any case to be made for its existence? Yes, please. That? That's a oh, good I don't, question. I don't think that's a terminus of unfreedom. I, I think you're think only free when you've declared against it, frankly. That's the beginning of freedom, is the emancipation. Is that the code the, the, the tyranny, the tyranny of, uh, of uh, theocracy, yes. I actually think that the whole point that I was making was that a belief in a God who creates you is what gives you free will and that without it, you have to fall into a determinism. And by the way, you may, not, you may think that science gives it to you, but every scientist I've asked on this question, including David Barash, who's an evolutionary biologist, says that, it, and Steven Pinker had the same reaction, is that it is more or less a commonplace of modern science, that determinism is the only worldview that's consistent with an understanding of the way science works. So you may be able to find it in science, but I haven't met a scientist yet who's been able to account for it. But not every now, scientist that, is a believer. Putting that aside, no, of course not. I'm saying that Almost those who no don't scientists. use determinism as their philosophical assumption, but let me answer his question too, which is, therefore, I assume that as a religious person, you're granted freedom. That's the whole point, is you do make choices. Once you've said granted, better choices, once you've, better said granted you've made my point. And well, he's English. He knows I'm about kids. No, you're granted, you're thank, granted, you for, thank you for making me free. You're What's granted. That? No, you're granted freedom. So you're granted freedom by the evolutionary process. I'm granted freedom by a creator. Either way, what you. Either way, granted, you have I'm to be. I'm not granted all sorts of freedom. I mean, the, the, right. of course, scientists are right to that this extent. There are. Einstein says the miraculous thing about the laws of nature is they're never suspended. That's what's so amazing about them. They're, I, they're immutable. Religion right. claims that on occasions. The laws of nature are suspended in order to depends, prove, the, in order to prove what they wouldn't otherwise It depends prove. who you ask, not Maimonides. It depends who you ask in religion. Is, is there a fundamental contradiction in your mind, Rabbi, between Jewish teaching mm -hmm. and evolution? No. None at all? Not. No. None. But evolution, as we learn it, doesn't require a deity. No. It, well, it depends what you mean by require a deity. It's just like saying that building the stage doesn't require a deity. The question isn't whether the, the discovery of the mechanism by which God made the world requires God. It just requires the discovery of the mechanism by which God made the world. But it also doesn't outlaw God or make God impossible or make it, in fact, less plausible. What's less the difference to, to your mind between mystery and incomprehension? Incomprehension. In other words, Descri incomprehension describes my reaction to the question. <laughs> oh, great. America's Mystery, rabbi, I think right. my question's incomprehensible. I'm not sure I understand. Tell me again. Well, uh, science In other words, has progressively made a lot of things comprehensible. Yes. Mystery, mystery means those things that by the very nature of the world are unfigureoutable, no matter how, no matter how bright we are, 
no matter how hard we work at it. How do you know that they're unfigurable? But you're, but you're, well, you're asking for that over incomprehensible. Right. You're asking no in a way that I'm not willing to concede um, is the pro proper way to describe religious conviction. Um, it's like saying to me, how do you know that love exists? Or how do you know that another human being is beautiful? Or how do you know that, uh, that I don't know, that these, uh, that these lights are a pageant of gorgeous colors? The answer is you don't know it. Some things you have is the deepest conviction of your soul, and they're things that make sense of the world in ways that nothing else makes sense of the world, but if you ask me, do I know that God exists the way I know that that glass is on the table, then I say you're putting it in, a, in an empirical, scientific framework, which is exactly the framework that religious people want to keep religion out of. No, but I want to put it the other way about how do you know the mystery won't be solved one day? Because, the, because it's not a mystery of a question that's solvable. It's like saying, do you, how do you know that the mystery won't be solved? Um, that that you have, a, have an ineradicable sense that the world is wondrous. I, I don't know how you would even think about solving such a mystery. I could understand it and still find it wondrous. Christopher, what about you? If it's not God, is oh, it I, all soluble? Well, first, one day... You're right that science has made many things more comprehensible to us, and, and it's explained things that religion used to take credit for. In other words, now we know there's a germ theory of disease. Diseases are not curses or revenges from heaven. Same with earthquakes and so on. The stuff they used to teach us, and many of them still do, is nonsense. Evil nonsense as, as well as ignorant nonsense. But it's also taught us, it, just in my lifetime, an enormous amount more about how little we know. We're much, much more ignorant yes. than people who lived before Galileo. We just, because we have a, now an increasingly large idea of, of the fantastic expanse of the, un, the unknown. Um, that's precisely the moment at which to say that skepticism is what's necessary. Inquiry... Uh, debate, doubt. Where's faith in this? Where's the usefulness of faith there? There's no use to it at all. Socrates, who, as far as I know, existed but may well not have done. It doesn't matter to me. No one will insult me if they say, Socrates, your, your great hero, didn't exist. Try it on a Muslim. Try it on a Christian. The, their prophets didn't exist. Or tell people that Moses is a myth. They start hurling themselves about, making menacing noises very often. Socrates said, you're only educated when you've understood how ignorant you are. And you're only going to even find that out by doubting everything all the time. There's all the difference in the world between that outlook and that mentality. Now, and the mentality of faith. And second, on, on, on metaphysics, which you, I noticed, take refuge in several times already this evening. Like, what is love? Um, is something poetic or is it prosaic? Very good questions, but metaphysical ones. Those who say... God exists and intervenes in the world. In other words, those who say there is a religious God, the God of religion, are saying that redemption is, is on offer to human beings, that salvation is on offer to them, and that if they reject the offer, they can be in really big trouble. Now, don't, don't start talking on, to an audience like this, or, if you don't mind, to a, a, debate, a debate partner like me, as if religion was a private matter, because everybody knows that if it was, there wouldn't be anything to argue about. It's precisely because it claims to be a total solution, a complete solution to all problems, available on, on, on pain of death, sometimes, in some forms, but available to you if you'll only have enough faith. Well, okay. we've just found out that faith is probably the most overrated of the virtues and the one most, least useful to us in the real dilemmas that we actually have to face. There are, there are so many things to unpack in that statement that I'll just pick on two or three. The first being, interestingly, that Socrates, whether he exists or not, existed or not, according to Plato at least, believed in the gods, and even in an afterlife. So he didn't doubt everything. The gods um, may be. But, uh, wait, no, wait, 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 didn't, didn't interrupt you. Um, but I want you to know, and Couldn't you should know this in say. particular, uh, I didn't interrupt you twice. Um, <laughs> but I want you to know. <laughs> you weren't quick enough. Uh, <laughs> It, well, may be, it, may, no, it may be true that part of it wasn't, was speed, but I also think it's because civility is very religious virtue. So the... Um, the I could have said that. The, <clears throat> the Jewish tradition actually doesn't tell you that everyone must do this in the world. Rather, it prescribes goodness. 
And that's what it is that religion is supposed to bring into the world. Now, can you point to examples of, relicid, of religious wickedness? Of course you can. But that's clearly what Judaism asks of people. The first obligation that you have is goodness. And that's why when you talk about religion as though it is inherently totalitarian and tells you you must act this way, it makes two mistakes. First of all, it doesn't see religion as evolving as everything else does. When 